Howdy there guys and girls, Ruckus here with a look at the Indian Panzer today. This is the tier 8 German medium tank of the Leopard 1 line that was introduced in patch 1.9.0, uh, middle of last year. It's taken me that long to get a tier 8 at my current rate of gameplay. Uh, it was designed by German engineers in the 1950s for the Indian Army, hence the tech tree and the name. And I am about halfway through, about 90k through the 173k XP grind that leads to the Leopard PTA vehicle that I am not looking forward to. But I am enjoying the Indian. It's a good tank with some big strengths that we'll get into. Uh, win rate on it at the moment is sitting pretty good, though I think I'm being carried by my platoon mates. A quick look here on blitzstars.com shows that it's sitting second. Amongst my tier 8 mediums, 77.63% win rate, but very low win 8 and win 7 uh, results there. So maybe I am being carried. I have been playing very, very badly lately. Uh, but I do expect that win rate to come up a bit as my early stock games are averaged out. It's sitting low there at 76 battles uh, so far. Okay, bringing up the Ruckus stat board for a quick look through the Indians' figures. We can see its stats on the left with the average and the performance uh, results on the right. Now the hit points are very low, 1300 equal lowest with the Type 59, that's not good, but the view range is spot on average, only the Super Pershing has less than 260 at tier 8, and the chance of a fire with an engine hit, fuel tank hit, very low, 12% uh, very good. Now the armour on the whole is okay, the front is not good, but the sides are excellent and we'll get into this a bit later on. Uh, the rear, okay, but don't get shot in the rear by anything. Uh, but the turret is underwhelming armor-wise, but as we'll see, it's a small target, so it's not quite so bad. Uh, the weight is fairly low for the tier, under average, uh, with the engine power being spot on average, meaning the power to weight is quite good. The speed limit, this is the slowest tank in this line at 50 k per hour, but that's still faster than the average. Again, Super Persian bringing down the averages there, 40 k top speed. So 48, sorry, so 50 k's per hour is quite good. The traverses though are both under average, resulting in a confined traverse that is 5% less than the average for the tier. Now the 9cm board Kanonen is a good weapon, high rate of fire, with a fairly low alpha damage. Uh, DPM is above average, 8% above average, which is quite good. Uh, the penetration values are all good, except for the HE rounds being a fairly low caliber gun, slightly under average. Dispersion, very accurate gun, uh, but the aim time is the slowest for the tier. A terrible aim time, really, uh, up against the rest of the tanks. And you do notice this uh, when you are sniping at people. Elevation angles, very good though. 20 degrees elevation and negative 10 degrees gun depression, which is great. If we head over now quickly to tanks.gg, bring up the Indian stats and have a quick look at the gun constraints for that 9cm board Kanonen. We can see that that 10 degrees of gun depression extends all the way around the vehicle, except for the very back. But even over the rear of the vehicle, it's still negative 7 degrees. This is a very good hill fighting machine. Uh, good power to weight means you can climb the hill, and excellent gun depression means you can uh, get over the hills to fire down on your enemies. Now, we did discuss that the armor isn't great on the turret, but it is a small target. Let's move now to the 3D model. Let's see, that it has quite a big gun mantle, but it's not particularly well armored um, but the rest of the turret is well rounded and you can get some bounces off it if it hits at a sharp enough angle. Now not only is the Indian a great hold down machine but it's also a surprisingly effective side scraper as well and I say surprisingly because if you look at the armor scheme on the hull down the sides it's actually not as good as listed in the stats. It says 90 millimeters of side armor whereas in reality uh, that 90 mils is only on the lower half of the side armor, with the top half being 60 mil, which isn't great. Certainly not good enough to do side scraping against tier 8 guns, tier 8 above guns. What I think makes this more effective than it should be, uh, obviously that side armor down the bottom is great if you angle it correctly, but what makes it more effective than it should be, if we swap now to the visual model, as you can see that the Indian, by appearance, looks wider than it actually is in the uh, armor model. That's because these toolboxes and the muffler exhaust system that runs down the side of the machine on both sides is not actually a hitbox. And if you back out, I think it has the effect of causing people to fire off too soon uh, and aim wider than they should. If they do that, 
they're going to hit the back of the machine and the further back you go uh, the sharper the angle and uh, the more effective that armor is so we're looking from this angle about 200 maybe even 230 mil of thickness which is enough to bounce a lot of the top guns at t8 unless we're talking tank destroyer guns of 250 mil and obviously that lower half of the armor if they aim too low is great we're looking now at 300 over 300 millimeters of effective armor thickness and to top it all off the indian has these massive drive wheels covering the front uh, portion of the side armor adding 20 mil thickness to the armor overall and protecting you against heat rounds you really don't want to show the whole armor at the front because it's not great that 90 mils that's well sloped is not going to bounce a lot of tier 8 guns uh, but if you present the armor in this manner even if you're out in the open often shots will plow into that drive wheel detrack you but you won't take any damage I get this all the time in the machine and it is a great feature on this tank and that is enough of the theory let's get into some gameplay starting here on Middleburg tier 9 battle myself and Furion in the Pershing the tier 8 American medium tank and it's a pretty tough lineup we've got one less tier 9 the Reds have also got an IS-6 platoon that can be quite stiff opposition if they know what they're doing but we are both in medium tanks that perform very well in the hills so the advantage is ours uh, depending on what we come up against so looking for an aggressive forward spotting position straight in tucked in behind this bush here getting very aggressive very brave mid this game no one spotted yet if you're in pushing forward and if he spots no one over that crest then looks like the reds have given up the hill completely they've all gone to town which is good news for us we've got the team spread out covering all angles of approach and if they know what they're doing they'll just sit tight hold the high ground and uh, wait to see what the reds do how they're going to play it here we go we've got an IS-8 coming for the hill obviously knowing we're all up here but he's taking some big damage on his way up and not real worried about that guy if he comes up by himself we've got plenty of guys up here we've got one medium tank running down to the right into town I wouldn't have done that I prefer if everyone just sat up here use the cover like I'm doing to remain hidden uh, and just spot and snipe as targets appear we've got no rush on the cap just yet there's no reason to be charging down into their territory like those mediums are doing. They are going to get demolished now. It's a medium and a tank destroyer actually. Who was that that went down there? Must have been the Ag Panther 2. Tiger going down. I don't know why you go down and fight them on their territory. There's the IS-8. Obviously having second thoughts about his position up there. Whack. One more shot. Swap to APCR, but he turned around, which means I get that side armor. And look for a blind shot. Oh, lucky. Not blind shot in the end, but very lucky all the same. Down goes a Yag Panther 2, who decided to fight a, <laughs> a war on flat ground where the Reds had the advantage. Haven't been spotted yet this game. It's tucked in behind a bush, sniping away with the 9cm board Canoden at distant targets we've got a tiger on cap that's never gonna work <laughs> that was ridiculous uh, and now we're two tanks down the reds just shifting about down there responding to our isolated flankers who uh, should have known better T20 versus Yag Tiger yep all right, two tanks down, three to one. The rest of our team on the hill. Not a huge problem. They're not capping. Uh, time is running out though, that's a concern, but we can't go down there now. We would be under strength. If we were gonna go down there, it should have been at the very start, but we didn't, we stuck to the hill, and now we are committed to the hill. Sitting behind a bush like I am, I expect to see any target before they see me, which gives me the upper hand. I can uh, 
pull back, fire, uh, or just stay in spot, as I'm about to do here. We've got two I6s, and here they are on the cap, and haven't been seen, and I'm not going to fire. I'm just going to see if the Yag Tiger or Furion can get a shot into their flank. If they move about there, they obviously know they've been spotted, but not by who and from where. You can see him shifting about there awkwardly. Cap is climbing. Not real concern, but I turned the auto aim off there. I'm going to go for a reset here once it gets to about 50%. Yep, that'll do. I pull back, expecting to be spotted, but not spotted. So back behind the bush. The other IS-6 having all the uh, capture points at this point. Where is the rest of their team? What are they doing? Are they flanking to my right? Do they expect us to rush down and reset? No need if they're just going to present themselves like that. There goes the IS. But that IS-6 who's sitting on cap is going to win it if we don't do something here. So I swap to the next bush. Leopard PDA has moved in. He is going to be a distraction, but he's a severe disadvantage down there against two Russian heavy tanks. 66% in climbing. Target right, Yag Tiger, but he can't spot me there. So I'm going to have to go down here. That PTA is not going to survive long. And there he goes. The bounce there. Look out. Spotted by the SU-152. You did not see me. And I have to expose myself here. We've come to a point now. It's 80% cap. Climbing down. I 6 knows I'm here. Reset. He connects. And I pull back. And now the pressure's off once again. But we have 1 minute and 12 seconds remaining on the clock with 5 enemies to dispatch. It's going to be tough. <laughs> that SU-152 has just run into the Yag Tiger's gun. So he's going down shortly. Some cheeky shots in the Yag Tiger. Have I been spotted? Light didn't go off. Still putting rounds in the Yag Tiger. Pull back in time to avoid the M103 spotting me as he came around the corner. And now look for the cap again from the left. 36 seconds remaining. They're not going to win it, but. Neither are we at this rate. Need another reset to be sure though. One shot through the front of the M103. Charge down the hill. Need that reset. There's the Yag Tiger. Bounce the shot off the side from the I-6. Couldn't do the same though from that 128mm gun. It's a big gun. And with 8 seconds left on the clock, this is definitely a draw. But the tier 8 mediums did quite well. Coming away with a bunch of damage and two kills apiece in a tough game. Defender, Sniper, and BIA. 2.6k damage for myself, 1.6 for Furion, and a good amount for the Ag Tiger as well. Decent accuracy stats, 13k credits. And not much <laughs> XP for a draw. <laughs> okay, on to match two. A tier 8 battle on Canal with myself and Pimp Daddy XR in the Ferdinand. The first German tier 8 tank destroyer to be included in Blitz. The second being the JP2 that was released uh, second half last year. I really expected to like the JP2. And I do like the mobility and I do like the gun. But I do not like the teams I've been getting in it. <laughs> it has been a painful run. But I am only 27 games in, so perhaps things will improve. And I'll have some games to show off in the future. Moving out to the open ground. Good territory for the Indian. And look out, T-44 spotted straight away. Boldly charging through the center of the map. And he gets shot away, but he swapped his aim at the last moment from the uh, VK to me. We both trade shots. Lots of reds in the center, just trying to pull back enough to uh, only expose the turret. Speculative shot at the I-60 pull past there. And gonna take one at the action Jackson. Yes, connecting hit. 
Jake Panther and a heavy, a couple of heavies actually out the back there, holding off the I-6 charging forward. Pimps with me on this side of the map, we just lose the T-150. And that side of the map is not looking good now, we are 3 love with our Yag Panther being charged aggressively by two tier 8s. Oh dear. Sorry, Yag Panther. Get out of the road, VK. One shot on the T44 as he pulls through there, and we lose the Yag Panther, but down goes Action Jackson, and T44 taking a bunch of damage. VK sat out in the air for too long. And now it's just myself and Pimp with Pimp on one kill, me on at zero, and two teams facing off over the canal. Now I can use these bushes to spot without getting spotted myself, so that's what I intend on doing. Pimp lands a good shot there, and I charge forward to try and take out the T44, but I come out and donk the shot into the mountain. Desperately retreat there before taking a hit from the I6 and whatever else is out there. Back to AP, looking for the M6, and I donk this up. I've been spotted now through the carcass of the VK, and it does get shot in me, but it goes into the tracks. Pimp just took out the I6, and that is a pretty stock looking T29 there. Looks like he's got the 75mm gun. Side scrape. He's not even looking my way anyway. Pimp gets the kill. It's his third. T44, looking to flank Pimp, but no chance, not with that amount of hit points. Gonna steal this one off Pimp, through the T44's front. Now, a heavy was spotted down in the canal there, I think it was the IS. So I pull up, looking for a bush to sit in and spot. There he is. Pim's gone to cap, so it is mono on mono. Maybe be careful I don't back too far up the hill, because there is still a KB2 in play. And trade shots, he loads the adrenaline, and his shot goes into my track. Using that gun depression, pull back. I'm reloaded by the time he's ready to come round again. He fires his second shot, goes in my other track, <laughs> the left hand side this time. Can't really blame him for using adrenaline. He was at a disadvantage from the start. And I slip by him for his third shot. His adrenaline is out, and I will likely reload before he gets a chance to fire this fourth shot. Bad luck. And where's that KV2? Who's going to get the top gun? Capture at 60%. I'd like to finish off the KV-2. We've got plenty of time. Request a reset, but no need. Here comes the KV-2. And I better not sit here too long. <laughs> Take the shot, dive into cover. Too far! You're exposed! Side armor! <laughs> Not enough political dissidents sent to the gulag, as Jingles would say. I like KV2 and well played Pimp getting the top gun there, well deserved. So the second class, Sniper, BIA and the Crucial. 3.5 for myself, 2.2 for Pimp with the top gun. 21 shots hired, 17 pens. 5 hits received, 28,000 credits, and a decent amount of XP for that one. The third match is on Castilla, another tier 8 battle, myself and Furion also in the Indian Panzer. And we're going to head off in the direction of the high ground, although Furion is going to head off in the direction of nowhere because his game has just crashed. <laughs> Uh, the Reds have got three tier 8s and the rest are tier 6s. Strange lineup, strange matchmaking. We have a big advantage going in this one. Three tier 8s, two tier 7s. That looks like a platoon of Tankensteins. And a couple of tier 6s bring up the rear. Ah, uh, matchmaking fails. So predictable. 
So, my thoughts in this particular game were to hold the bridge. I'm going to try and side scrape that far building behind a bush and just see what comes along. I don't expect the Reds to have a strong hill push team, so I don't feel the need to contest it. Got uh, VK3601H and the Centurion 1 backing me up. And we sit here, but no one is going to come along. So, alright, change of plan. The Reds have obviously all gone to cap all the right flank. Furon has just woken up, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> so he can hold the Reds push over that windmill side of the map. Windmill side of the map? Whatever the hell that side of the map is. The eastern side. With the Tankensteins. Who are in a defensive position, which is good to see. Looks like they're going to be able to at least stall the Reds as they push through. Actually, Furon's come my way. That's okay. Expect to see targets on the hill. It is a windmill. Damn it. Here we go. T-34 Independence. I bounce a shot there, I think. And I side scrape this building here. Behind me, Furion's putting fire into the T-34 as well. I get one more shot as he dives into cover. And look at this. Shoot him, and his return shot glances off my side. That is the highest penetration heavy tank gun at tier 8, about 250mm pen. And I just bounced that off my side armor. You do not see that often with medium tanks. I bounce the KV-1S. He shot detracts me. And Furion gets that kill. The Reds are stalled on the hill. We've lost the Tankensteins. They weren't as defensive as I thought they were. You cheeky bugger! T-34 sticking his gun out between the rocks there, but he had nowhere to go. Literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. I get one more shot in him before he goes down. The reds are all boxed in now. I move to the next side scraping position. Against this building and against that KB-4. Who has the 107mm gun, which is by far the superior weapon on that machine. You don't want to use the 122mm. And his shot there does manage to go through. Uh, I imagine my angle was just a little bit too wide and he hit the upper portion of the armor there. That IS-3 though has not the gun depression needed to hit me from down in the creek bed. So he comes all over the top. Again, I bounce a shot into the side armor and my return shot connects. And now we've got him permanently tracked on the edge here. Furon, I think, is putting fire through the buildings into that KV-4. I get one through his lower plate. And with just these two tier 8 heavy tanks left, I'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Enemy armor is damaged. Yes, one kill for me. So pretty happy with that result. Even though I didn't get many medals, there was some really good side scraping in there. 2.6k damage, 2.5 Furion. I took 6 hits received there, some big guns firing my way. 30k credits and 1.5 XP. Carrick joins us for the fourth game on Oasis Palms. He is in the T-44 and we are unsurprisingly going to move out into the dunes. Far better territory for these nimble medium tanks than in the uh, more obstacle heavy and busy northern flank. Better area for side scrapers out there and less uh, shorter fields of view, I think you could say. Which is maybe why I don't go there too often. I am rambling this episode. I apologize. <laughs> so, looking for a forward spotting position. I'm gonna move from June to June here. Just crest enough to see over the top. Always having a position to fall back into if reds do appear. Nothing spotted yet though, so we move forward. I 
again, nothing spotted. Off to the 3rd June, overlooking the cap. As Carrick and whoever that other medium was move to the left hand flank, they will spot AFK T32. That is good news for us. That'll even out the advantages. Flat Panzer threatening our IS6. We can't have that. Why is he sitting out in the open after being spotted like that? Man, you gotta take your shot and bail. Uh, some advice that would have been relevant to the SU-100Y, who was obviously under a lot of fire there from various guns hidden at the back. Our flankers get the T-32, who probably didn't put up much of a fight, being AFK. Now we turn our attention to the T-25-2, who should have kept reversing towards his remaining allies. That is not a safe position, my friend. This gun's swinging my way. Just exposing the top of my turret here and dancing about manages to bounce that shot. Yes, kill number one. Now T150 is in trouble, T44 is after him, but the IS6 has come back. And look out, SU-152 with the derp gun, engine fire on him. But he's going to get a shot away at the IS-6. One more hit. Engine fire finishes the job, but that was a big hit on the IS-6. And the T-44 will get this kill. I'm calling for help. One shot on him as he drives past. And backing away, looking for a hold down position, but I'm not going to get it in time. But I've got the armor angled. That shot goes into my left hand drive wheel at the front. D-tracking me. No damage. And move away because I expect that IS-3 to be approaching. Carrick and the T-3485 are coming back across the cap. There's the IS-3. Can I get one of the T-44 to help out Carrick? Yes! A snapshot there, it was lucky. And I'm going to go mono on mono with this IS-3 who's taken a hit, which is good news. But I do make a bit of an error here. I want to track this guy, hopefully holding him in position, but it doesn't work. It doesn't track him. I should dive to the other side of the dune and try to remain to hold down because that would be my advantage. But we're on the same side now and he's got adrenaline on. I cannot express how disappointed I am that they included this in Blitz. It is shit game design in my opinion. And it's a uniquely Blitz problem as well. He's got it on and it's going to afford him a couple of lucky shots. This one would not have connected. He didn't have it that there, that was lucky, but I just got enough hit points to survive this engagement. And that's the game done. First class and the BIA. 4k for myself, 1.74 Carrick. Good accuracy stats in that game, only one non-penetrating hit, 30,000 credits. And it was a times three weekend. 5k XP. Back on canal for the final match. Myself and Nude Cutter in the Independence. And I'm looking at the lineup on this one thinking that south eastern corner is not really where I want to be. The Reds have got two T44s, a T62 Dragon, the new Chinese premium light tank. And by the looks of it, a VK36, no, VK301P. So we don't have the stronger medium team. And I'm going to go to the northwestern corner, hold down with the new cutter, and that's where I'm going to start this game. Now I'm definitely overdue doing another tall talk episode. I've got a bunch of stuff to talk to. I've just been slack lately. Don't have the energy for it. But one of the things I want to discuss is the dragon. Um, by all accounts. It's a good tank. The guys I know who own it uh, reckon it's great. They're big fans. But I'm not going to buy it because I'm having issues uh, with Wargaming's marketing policy at the moment and their habit of bundling new premium tanks in with a bunch of stuff that I don't necessarily want. And perhaps you guys don't necessarily want as well. If you're like me and you've got too much gold or you just don't want to spend twice as much for a vehicle as uh, what they charge, seeing as you have to buy bundled stuff like gold and premium timing tanks. Um, we should kick up a fuss because <laughs> they're not going to change unless we complain. 
and I personally am done with paying twice as much as I need to pay for a, you know, a digital machine to add to my digital garage. I paid 80 bucks for the KB5 Black Friday bundle at the end of last year. 80 bucks for a mobile game. And if you broke it down, it was good value. You had 12,000 gold, four tanks, two months premium time. But with that 12,000 gold, what do I do? I can only buy premium time with it. I've got 25, 26 million credits, uh, 100,000 free XP. I don't have anything to spend that gold on besides more premium time with the month I've got left now runs out. <sighs> it's annoying. And then the week after I bought that KV5 bundle, uh, the Sentinel came out, the AC1 Sentinel, Australian tank, and I had to buy that. But do you think I could buy it by itself? Just pay actual money for the tank? Do you think I could pay for it with the gold I already had, the 12,000 gold I already had? No, I had to buy the tank and extra gold to add to my bank balance. Pointless, completely pointless, cost twice as much as it need to. And, okay, I said I was going to say this rant for Tall Talk, but I've just had that rant. We should all make a fuss and get them to change this bullshit because they are ringing us dry for cash. They really are. It is getting out of control, I reckon, lately. Okay, I'm done. I've ranted enough this episode. I was hanging back there at the start because I expected snipers on the far side of the canals and the ISU was over there. Uh, fortunately, our T-44 raced ahead. He took a heap of damage getting there, but he picked out the ISU and we took down the most dangerous gun on the Reds team. The Dragon got a bit too bold. He came through the low ground and was spotted and we pounced on him. And now this T-44 is also separated from his team, so I'm going to come back, deal with this guy. And that will leave our team in a fairly strong position if we can take this guy down without losing anyone else. A VK-3601H is trying to flank back behind him. That's uh, not a safe move for someone with 300 hit points left. As soon as he's spotted, and he is now, the T-44 makes the right decision to flank back, take out the weakest tank surrounding him. And we lose the VK, and I make a bit of a noob mistake here. Fire down into the T-44, but it bounces off his tracks, and that gives him the time to reload and take out a KV-1S. Teams of 4v4, or 3v3 left. With Nude Cutter on half his hit points. There's the enemy T-44 taking a battering somewhere. That's good news. So I moved flank, looking for, perhaps I can get a shot through there, but no, no luck. Continue to flank, but here's the Panther, and this is another guy with adrenaline. Though, you can forgive him, it's a tier 8 battle. New cutter goes down, taking several consecutive hits. As this T-44 looks to get to the high ground, but predict his position and I get that shot just the KV-1S left with two minutes left on the clock move through the center of the map here try and cover as much ground as possible to pick this guy out before the counter runs down prefer to get kills, I don't want to cap So what do you think guys, are you as over the wargaming marketing policy as I am? This habit of bundling stuff together? Tell me your thoughts, maybe we can create some kind of community driven uh, change to their money hungry habits. KVNS, poor bloke, doesn't even have the top gun, he will not last long. And my final shot, of course it bounces, but if he continues to back up, he will be just about there. That's the game done, a nice little Radleys to finish off things. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for listening to me rant on, and I'll catch you soon in the next one. Peace!